70 to 75 percent of African Americans are lactose intolerant. The prevalence amongst Asian Americans is 95 to 98 percent. Amongst Native Americans, it's around uh, 70, I think 74 to 78 percent. And amongst Hispanic Americans, it is 53 to 58 percent. Whereas amongst Caucasian Americans, it's only around 33 to 35 percent. And um, that is because the use of dairy foods have been uh, traditionally uh, uh, much more common in people of European ancestry. And so again, dairy foods have not been a traditional part of the cultures and cuisines of people of color. And therefore, the um, recommendations in the dietary guidelines for people to include these foods in their uh, diets uh, can't be justified. And so what is the reason that these foods are recommended? It's marketing, plain and simple. After I finished residency, I was working, uh, doing urgent care part-time for um, uh, Kaiser, but also working in free clinic in Alexandria. And I was having African-American African patients coming in telling me, Doc, my irritable bowel is acting up, or I've got a spastic colon. And I talked to them about their symptoms, and it was fairly clear to me that probably what was going on with them wasn't that they actually had spastic colon or ir irritable bowel, uh, was, it was that they were continuing to include dairy foods in their diet. So I'd have them go home, do two weeks, no dairy, come back and see me, and eight to nine out of 10 times, the problems had cleared up. And so I'd tell them, no, you are lactose intolerant, uh, which is the case with most um, um, African Americans, so you need to avoid dairy. Well, the clincher came when this one um, older black woman came back, and I said to her, uh, she said the problem had cleared up, and I said, well, you're lactose intolerant. She looked at me and said, I know that. And I said, then why are you continuing to eat these food, dairy foods? She said, because the government says I have to. And that just blew me away. Um, she said, the dietary guidelines say I have to eat X number of servings of dairy every day, you know, to get my calcium. And that pissed me off. And that's when I went to PCRM and I talked to Dr. Barnard and I said, look, we gotta do something about this because African-American people are eating foods that are gonna make them sick because they think they have to do it. And that, out of that um, came our two-part paper called Racial Bias in the U.S. Dietary Guidelines. Uh, part one of the paper dealt with uh, the issue of lactose intolerance in communities of color. And then part two dealt with the larger issue uh, of the fact that an animal food-centered uh, diet is going to create disproportionate levels of disease in communities of color because of the presence of what are called thrifty genes. So when you look at the traditional diet of communities of colors, so Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans, uh, West Africans, these are diets that traditionally are built around plant, whole plant foods, contain no dairy, are low in fat, and have limited amounts of animal foods. And when people stick to these kinds of diets, they have very low rates of chronic disease. But when they start to adapt a Western style, high fat, high animal food centered diet, particularly when they start to consume uh, a lot of uh, meat and dairy foods, their rates of chronic disease not only skyrocket, but they typically begin to exceed uh, those in the general population. And so by encouraging people to consume a Western-style diet, the government knows that they are going to ultimately promote excess rates of disease in communities of color. And to do this deliberately is a form of institutional race, uh, racism. But it's particularly egregious in communities of color because with respect to the issue of dairy foods, what is the primary reason the government encourages people to consume dairy foods? Well, calcium, right? And what is the primary reason for uh, consuming calcium? 
Come on, you guys know. Bones. Well, first of all, there is no commercial you will ever see on TV that will tell you that eating dairy foods will give you strong bones. Because there is no study that has ever shown it. There's a commercial that came out a couple years ago. There are some black guys playing basketball. And then there's this idiot that comes out in a milk carton costume. And he starts talking smack with the guys playing basketball. He says, if you want to be good at basketball, you need strong bones. And he says, milk has calcium. And for strong bones, you need calcium. And he leaves you to make the inference that drinking milk with the calcium is going to give you strong bones, but he never says it. He never says it because no study has ever shown it. In fact, every study has shown exactly the opposite, that the more milk you drink, the more likely you are to have osteoporosis. But it actually gets worse than that, because every study has always shown that, for some reason, black women are genetically protected against osteoporosis. Black women don't get osteoporosis, period. And so the primary reason for allegedly drinking milk Black women are protected against it anyway. So the government is encouraging African American women to drink milk for no good reason, knowing that it's gonna make them sick in the process. That's disgusting. It also knows that women who drink milk are more likely to get ovarian cancer. It knows that when African American men drink milk, they are more likely to get prostate cancer and they're, gonna like, they're more likely to die from it. No, also knowing that African-American men are more likely to have problems with access to health care, and so when they get the prostate cancer, it's going to be AMF yo-yo. Y'all know what that stands for? Adios, I'm going to use a polite term, my friend, you're on your own. <laughs> so, yeah, it's institutionalized racism. It, it's, it's a deliberate effort on the part of the government to encourage the consumption of foods that it knows promotes disease with no demonstrable benefit. And our government has had a history of taking uh, minority communities, putting them in a position of food insecurity Making, and thereby making them dependent upon the government for food subsidies that it then uses essentially as dumping grounds for agricultural uh, excess and, and basically dumps these commodity foods into these communities and these again are the foods that promote chronic disease. That's pretty, pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, any questions?